Hi, this is Larry W6WUH in California. I'm going to show you my 10 tick Titan II linear amplifier. Take a look at the front panel here. Very nice condition. I think this is a probably a uh, a low time amplifier. We'll check this serial number see if it's late production or not. But at any rate, uh, the basic controls, the on-off. These are illuminated uh, switches. Stand by and operate. QSK. Push to talk. And uh, here's the metering. So, uh, you can meet, uh, look at the screen current, plate current, forward power, reflected power. And uh, there's the meters. And uh, they're also giving you a, a peak power bar graph here. And uh, this will uh, get red when you uh, exceed the uh, uh, 1500 watts peak envelope power, which it'll do easily. Uh, these things uh, uh, takes about 75 watts of drive to uh, drive this to legal limit output. So if you hit it with 100 watts, you're going to be putting out 23-2500 watts uh, without any problem which you don't want to do but uh, uh, lots of headroom of uh, the thing will run cool uh, and last forever if you run it legally. Tentec uh, warranted the uh, the tube in this uh, amplifier for 5,000 hours which is a heck of a lot of time uh, you know if it's uh, on, uh, you know, a couple hours a day, <laughs> it takes a long time to do that. Here's the uh, the band switch, uh, 160 divided into two uh, two bands, 80, 40 divided into two bands. The previous owners got this set for 30. We'll look inside and see what he's done and if he's changed the tap or not. 20, 15. And uh, see if 10 meters is enabled in this amp. I think it probably is. Really beautiful uh, vernier tuning. Just as smooth as butter. Just gorgeous. Uh, the, this, these amplifiers are really quite incredible. When we get inside you'll, you'll see. Uh, the tube is a 4CX 1600 Bravo. Uh, it's a Penta slash Svetlana uh, tube, single tube, uh, very rugged tube uh, designed for commercial uh, continuous duty service like FM. And in this amplifier running at uh, a 1500 watts output, the tube is loafing along. And uh, this radio supposedly has the... Uh, uh, the lowest distortion products of uh, any of the legal limit commercially made amplifiers. So, if you run something like an expensive Yesu that's capable of Class A sideband and you use this amplifier, I think you're set up to have the cleanest signal on the band. All right, we'll turn around and look at the back of it and then we'll open it up and look inside. Just have a look at the side here while we're turning it around. So there's the rear panel. Let's go right in here and look at the uh, model 416. Uh, remember this is not a 425, this is a 416 with a single Svetlana uh, tetrode in it. There's the serial number 12 alpha 159 10059 so I'm going to call Tentec and ask them about any service history on this production date. See what else we can find. Uh, there's a type acceptance for it. Let's look at the connectors on the back. Uh, there's the output jack. There's the input. ALC adjust. Uh, output for uh, ALC control of your transceiver if it needs it. Keying in, keying out. Push to talk and Vox. So uh, can key the transmitter and key something else like an antenna relay if you need to. 
Uh, there's the fuses. We well, can't accuse Tantac of fooling around. Look at all the screws holding this top cover on. 5, 10, 15, 20, 20 little screws to hold that top cover on. And they're all machine screws. Uh, not, uh, not sheet metal screws. They had to drill and tap every one of these holes when they built it. Oval holes in the cover so they can get the alignment just right. Well, vinyl in the amplifier is like getting a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. So, all in all, this one is pretty nice. No uh, burn components, overheated components, band switches are just gorgeous silver plated contacts. All oh, that's very nice. Look over here in the power supply. Everything looks very nice. No burned or overheated components. Every one of these capacitors says 9811 on the top and I wonder if it's a date code. Got a feeling it is. Transformers look okay. All the wiring looks fine. No sign of any overheating and anything. A little bit dusty. Everything looks good here. Plate choke looks good. No signs of overheating on it. Everything looks okay on here. Until we get to here where the plate connection for the tube was soldered to that board and you can see that it's gotten hot enough to unsolder it and there is a telltale puddle of solder that little mother got hot now let's take a look at the cover Here's the cover directly over the tube, and what do we see? Four little smoke trails. Not a good sign. And we go over to the chimney for the socket, and you can see these telltale traces right up the side of this cardboard or whatever it is tube and when we look in here real close it looks to me like that got pretty damn hot now you notice on the band switch that somebody had put a label in the second half of the 40 meter Oh, also take a look at this. It seems to say 98 16 alpha. So this thing may have been made in 1998 or 99. The uh, on the band switch on the front, they've taken the 40B band switch and relabeled it 30 meters. So my guess is that they've been running this thing not completely in resonance or else at very high power uh, and heated the bejesus out of this tube. So we've got to pray that the tube uh, could stand the gaff and uh, it's still operating normally. We'll get it fired up here by and by. We'll run it with just the filaments on for 24 hours and then 
apply low power to it and we'll look at the grid current. And if the grid current is normal and the power output is normal and the tube's normal, but if the grid current is high uh, into a resonant dummy load or a resonant load or a dummy load, then uh, we know the tube has uh, had a hard life. Anyway, I'm going to just uh, get in here and uh, hit the thing with the damp rag, get the dust off it, and uh, take the bottom cover off and see what we can discover in there. Well, there's the play tuning capacitor, band switch, tank coils, plate choke. This is uh, got double uh, interlocks and the lid is on there it holds this little crowbar off but when the lid comes off shorts out the power supply B plus and uh, here's a little micro switch for the primary I'm sure. So Everything looks real good except for the discoloration of this uh, chimney. I'm not sure what this is. This seems to be some kind of resin impregnated glass fiber, I think. Looks like cardboard, but it's hard as a rock and it obviously stands up to many thousands of volts. So, things clean enough to eat off of, all I did was dust it with a damp rag. And uh, everything looks just fine. This is the one suspect item. I'm going to try to take the bottom off and uh, go look down in here. A little bit of dust, but that's all I see. But, uh, I don't know, I want to see the... Uh, the uh, grid bias supply and the control circuitry which is under the bottom. Well there's the bottom of the thing. Even got a bale on it just like it was a transceiver not a 85 pound 2.5 kW linear amplifier. Fan looks okay so we'll take the bottom off. You can see that there's a sub chassis under here so we'll take these black screws out see where we get feet may hold it on and uh, figure it out from there it's like we might actually have one missing screw well there we are but, uh, four of those screws on the bottom held this fan on and uh, here we've got a uh, relay, relay board. Uh, I think it's got a two and a half minute warm up time on the filaments before it lets the B plus come on. A couple of fuses in there, they look like they're in good shape. This be the uh, power supply for the screen. Uh, grid bias and uh, let's see grid overdrive so there's a, a grid current protection circuit and uh, I don't know what all this is but that's connected with the the keying lines more relays. Looks to me like it's part of a uh, soft start mechanism here with all those power resistors. And uh, here's the uh, power uh, meter circuitry connected with the 
output connector. Here's the bottom of the tube and a view through the tube. You can see all the cooling fins are clear. And I'll look at them for discoloration. You can tell they got plenty hot. So, so the health of the tube will remain a mystery until we fire it up and see what happens. I got to do a little research with Tentec and find out if 30 meters was ever intended for operation with this thing. And uh, show a picture of that tube and see what we can learn. The good news is that this thing is pretty clean. Uh, get a really clean, here's a clean paper towel. We'll run it over there. And we're not getting very much. So, certainly uh, a non-smoker, been in a pretty clean environment, a little bit of dust. But this whole cabinet here is pressurized. And if there was going to be any dirt buildup or anything in there, we'd see it and we don't. So, uh, I say all in all, very, very good. So, clearly no. Get the light to go on here. No burned overheated components, bubbling wiring, no telltale signs of any kind of distress. Now this is one rugged ass amplifier and whatever he did about uh, running it at excess power, running it into a, a non-resonant load or anything else certainly didn't seem to have faced anything else in this beast of an amplifier. So, well, the tube is supposed to be a beast as well, so got an idea it probably better than it looks. So we'll just uh, take a look in here if we can.